The first flower ever to bloom in space actually just happened recently, and it was grown from beginning to end. But it wasn't, that wasn't the complete story. It actually, along with most botany in space, has a long and complicated story of fraught with almost failures and beyond, and especially uh, mold. So let's take a look at the flowers in process. So these were in the veggie facility in the International Space Station. We've talked about it before. Uh, there were attempts to grow lettuce, uh, which did succeed. But lettuce is a lot easier to grow than the finicky zinnia. Astronauts needed to be able to make these blossom on the space station. And they noticed a lot of problems, as you see in this picture. Uh, there's some drying leaves. There's some curling, which indicates that perhaps the roots are drowning. Um, and some other factors such as uh, droplets at the ends of the leaves, which also indicates overwatering. So they tried to solve this problem by turning on fans uh, all the time, which the zinnias didn't really notice, and things were not going so well for the flowers. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, that's the thing is like also there was mold on the flowers, and, so and you don't want thing. fans blowing mold around yeah, your space so station. Mold is not just bad for the flowers, it potentially hurts the mission and all of the people aboard the space station. Yeah, you think it's bad in your college <laughs> dorm room. What? Oh, I have a friend <laughs> who had a college dorm room have so much mold in it, and she got really sick. Uh-huh. She's not in space, she could have left that room. In space, you can't leave that room, you can go to a different part of the station, but it's very small for those of you who've never been aboard a space station. I think the, the the steaks are much more amped up in space, which is extremely yeah, exactly. inhospitable to And you people. have to feed the cows to get the steaks. There's not mm -hmm. enough room for them to graze, especially when the lettuce is dying. So they fixed it. They seem to have fixed it. Well, the astronauts had an emergency spacewalk. They didn't have time for this. No. Hey, no astronauts got time for this. So they, they called, uh, they didn't call. They talked to uh, scientists on Earth. Veggie head scientist Trent Smith uh, was called out of bed early in December to come fix the problem. Uh, he assembled his team. Within four hours, they came up procedures for astronaut slash emergency gardener technician mm -hmm. Scott Kelly uh, to fix this this mold issue. Uh, he had to bag the, up the mold and put it in the freezer for maybe future study. But they also had to think of different ways to make sure that these plants survived. Um, and there was a very extensive plan outlined to which Kelly politely basically said, I don't want to do this. How about we do like, if I saw a flower in need of water, I water it. And to that, uh, head scientist Trent Smith said, fine, that sounds good. Yeah, this is an example of like people in science like kind of losing touch <laughs> with reality. No, like because... I get it, they have a lot of, I and mean, I know they wanted like, there's a lot going on. And then there's like a, 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 a astronaut who's like, I'm really busy. <laughs> I'm busy here in space, I got a lot to do. We're growing a plant, right? Is that what we, and so usually when the plant needs water, you water it. Can I just do that? I know, I mean, it seems like a lot of procedure and a lot of steps that maybe aren't needed. But when you're dealing with space, this is something that needs to be regimented. Usually one little mistake could maybe mean life and death. Uh, maybe that not so much with plants, but in general, I would say this is the way that it needs to be in order to ensure uh, not just the success of a mission, but the survivability of anyone involved. Uh, but actually, uh, Trent Smith said he was happy with um, the astronaut being able to be like, you know what, I'm going to use my logic and common sense and improvise. And they did come up with a guide, which was, I don't remember the name, but it was pretty cute. It was like helping zinnias in space. Yeah. A <laughs> practical guide for astronauts. It was cute. I liked it. Um, and it was basically just, you know, a few certain guidelines to go by. But then the also another key was... Use your common sense. You can yes. do it. And he was actually able to do it. Two plants did die, but two plants survived and thrived and bloomed. And it turned out great. What I like about this is I want to believe that all they're trying to do by like growing edible plant life in space is, is to prove that the movie The Martian could happen. Yeah, I mean, it is fiction, but it's, you know, thinking on your feet, using your set of knowledge, using guidelines, but mostly... Um, coming up with practical plans on your own as an astronaut. And it worked out well. And this means a lot for the future because zinnias are finicky and they are the precursor to tomatoes, which are also finicky to be grown uh, on their own on the ISS. Are they a nightshade? 
I don't know what that is. That's what tomatoes are. They're a nightshade. Well, it's a I th kind of plant that's also think in these lore. These tomatoes will be edible by people because that is the point of this mission at this point. Uh, so it's been a long and arduous journey for the zinnias, which, by the way, can be eaten and are scientifically important and significant plants. You can put them in tacos as well. Uh, audience, what do you think of the first plant blooming in space? A lot of possibilities from this one. Let us know what you think below in the comments, and please like and subscribe for more.